Okay, so in this first lesson, we're going to get started by talking about some of the different attributes found on the Arnold Standard material inside of Maya. Okay, so here we have this relatively simple scene set up here with this strawberry. And what we're going to do is use this as sort of an example to talk about a lot of the different attributes that are found on the standard material type for Arnold. So to take a look at this, let's come in and just start by opening up our render settings. And let's make sure that we are actually going to be using Arnold for our renderer. Now one of the things that I like about Arnold is the fact that we can use the IPR and use that really to our advantage when it comes to working with materials and lights. So we can come in, select a view that we want to be active, and just simply enable the IPR. You can see right now it's going to kick off with Arnold Renderer. Okay, you can see once it gets started that we have our IPR that begins and we can see right away we already have a few uh, simple materials set up here. And when it comes to setting up lights and things like that, we'll talk about those in one of our later lessons. But for now, I really just want to focus on the materials themselves. So like I said, with this uh, IPR, this interactive renderer, we can come in here and start to move things around and, and see these in a really, really nice way. Uh, so let's come in here and just take a look at what we've got. So let's start by opening up the Hypershade, and we can start to work there. So I'm going to go over here to just a split Hypershade view. And when it comes to working with Arnold, we do have a few material types uh, to choose from. In this case, we're going to focus mainly on the standard material, which is right here. You'll also notice that uh, right now the strawberry is just sort of a gray color. Uh, so we can render a lot of the standard Maya materials inside of Arnold as well, which is actually a really, really nice feature to have. So let's go ahead and get started with this standard material. Now, this standard material is really just sort of an all-purpose material. Um, if you've ever had a chance to work with Mental Ray, it would be very similar to the Mental Ray architectural material, where we can simulate pretty much everything that we need to with this standard material, everything from uh, metal to wood to plastic to glass and pretty much everything in between. We can pretty much accomplish everything that we need to. So let's take this standard material and assign it to the strawberry body. So right-click assign material to selection. You can see right away my materials update here inside the IPR. Let's open up the attributes for this standard material. So starting up at the top, we have uh, the color for this, which works pretty much just like any standard Maya material. So we can come in here and start to adjust the sliders on this. Now, you'll notice that when I adjusted this particular slider, it did not actually update inside my IPR. So when it comes to working with Arnold, uh, sometimes we have to come in here, and if we start to change uh, material attributes like texture or color, sometimes we may need to come in here and force the IPR to refresh itself. So let's click on Refresh, and there we go. So now that it sees that there's a color texture applied, and now it can take that into account as we start to make adjustments here inside the IPR. Now, w if we wanted to come in here and plug in some sort of an image for this, we can just click on the little checker, and we can plug in a standard... 2D file node for this. Uh, you'll find that Arnold is able to use pretty much all of the 2D material types as well as as many as the th of the uh, 3D texture types, which is, again, a really, really nice feature to have. So just like we would any other material, we're going to plug in a 2D file node. Okay, and we're going to come down inside this source images directory for the current project that we're working out of, and we're going to plug in the strawberry color. Go ahead and click OK. Again, if you need to, you may need to come in here and force the IPR to refresh. But in my case, you can see it's going to be working fine. Okay, so now we have a color or a texture map that's plugged into this Arnold standard material. Now below this, we have our weight slider, which pretty much is just a multiplier for this color. So if we bring the weight all the way down to zero, you can see we pretty much just get a black surface because there's no color being calculated. Or if we bring that all the way up to one, uh, we get the full intensity of that texture map. Usually this is going to be set to a default value of 0.7, and I usually find that that's going to be a pretty good value to stay with, somewhere between 0.7 and 0.8. And the reason for that is because in the real world, uh, there are actually very, very few surfaces that return 100% of the color back to the viewer's eye. Usually some uh, portion of the light that is sent to this object is going to get absorbed and stay with it. So. I find that this is going to be a pretty good value for realism purposes. 
Now, below this we have our roughness setting. Now, this sort of starts to control the distribution of the light around this surface itself. Now, this might be a little bit easier to see if I were to come in and just take a, a quick little save of that. If we start to increase this roughness, we should start to see a little bit more kind of an even distribution of light compared to what we had before. So less of kind of a focused hot spot and something that is now a little bit more kind of even. In my case, it's a little bit more dull, uh, but this starts to give surfaces maybe, again, a little bit more of that almost kind of a powder coat look. Uh, it's a nice feature to have, but in truth, I, I usually don't find myself using this just a whole awful lot. Now below this, we have our backlighting slider. Now you can almost sort of think of this as translucency, where for single-sided surfaces, we can start to allow light to pass through from the backside and start to give a little bit more of a translucent feel. Now for this uh, particular instance, I'm going to come in, and I already have a standard material applied to these strawberry leaves. So what I'll do is demonstrate this on these leaves. So as I start to bring up the backlighting for the leaf material, you can start to see where we have a light source that's back behind the leaf that's actually casting some light through here. And what we're starting to see now is some light that's coming through the backside and again, sort of illuminating the backside of this leaf. So compared to what we had before, we can start to get some of those really nice kind of translucent effects. Now you can see a little bit can go a pretty long way. So this is definitely one of those sliders where uh, you'll need to come in here and just really kind of think about subtlety. Okay, very nice. So that is a lot of the attributes that relate to the diffuse materials or the diffuse options. Now down below, we're going to be back uh, now, by the way, working on the strawberry body material. Um, and in the standard material now, we have some specular controls. Now in Arnold, the specular controls work a little bit differently than what you might be used to. Um, inside of Arnold, the specular actually does have a reflective component. So you'll see this if you start to bring the specular weight up a little bit. You can see that not only do we actually sort of have the specular highlight that we're used to seeing, but we actually start to see a few reflections in here. Now right now these reflections are pretty blurry, and that's controlled by this roughness slider. So if I were to bring my roughness all the way down to zero, now we should actually start to see some pretty strong reflections in here. So in addition to, like I said, the actual uh, hot spots that we start to see with our light sources, uh, we actually do start to see some reflection in here as well. So a little bit different than, than what you might be used to. Um, so we can come in here, and once we have our reflections set up, we can start to blur these out a little bit. In the case of something like this strawberry, we'd probably want these to be pretty blurry. But you'll notice that it starts to give a little bit uh, of kind of an unrealistic result. This is a really, really shiny strawberry. Uh, probably much more shiny than what we would expect to see in real life. Now part of the problem is what we have uh, right now is a pretty unrealistic result as far as the actual reflection. And part of that has to do with this Fresnel option. So the Fresnel, once we start to turn that on, starts to help a lot as far as the reflections go. Now the reason for this is because in the real world, most surfaces actually appear more reflective the more indirectly you look at them. So these areas here that are very heavily oriented away from us, or away from the camera, should start to be more reflective than these areas that are directly uh, pointing toward us. And as we start to introduce a little bit more of this Fresnel, you can see that that's exactly the effect that we start to get. Now what we can start to do is bring this reflectance at normal up a little bit, and once we start to bring that up, basically the higher this goes, the more reflective these areas that are being directly viewed or, or oriented directly toward the camera, the more reflective those are going to become. So as we start to bring that reflectance at normal to sort of a medium value, we can ensure that we still get a nice little bit of reflection toward the outside, but the uh, insides are still fairly reflective. Uh, we can come in here and now start to fine tune this a little bit until we find some values that are going to work for us. And like I said, this IPR uh, functionality of Arnold is where this whole thing starts to really, really shine because this now starts to become a really, really easy process to come in here and just tune these things up until we get them right where we want. Okay, very nice. 
Um, now below here we have some reflection controls. Now keep in mind that this is a little bit different from the uh, specular controls. Now when it comes to working with reflection, uh, reflection and specular are very similar inside of Arnold. Uh, the main difference is that specular has the ability to become blurred so we can start to get these really nice blurred reflections. Uh, reflections actually you'll notice do not have a roughness slider. We pretty much just have a weight slider. So to demonstrate this if I were to bring my uh, specular weight all the way down to zero you can see we're pretty much but just back to a Lambert surface. We can now start to introduce some reflections in here and again these are true reflections not the specular reflections that we've been looking at but you'll notice that these start to look a little bit different so as I start to bring this up uh, you can start to see some reflections but one of the things you no longer see are the actual highlights from our light sources that's a function that is reserved for this specular component so keep that in mind that these two sliders are definitely uh, related but they are obviously very, very different from each other. So if you have a scene where you don't need to be able to pick up specular highlights or you don't need to have any sort of blurred reflections, then this reflection slider can be a good way to work. But what you'll probably find is for most situations, you will probably want to use this specular slider. So that way we can actually start to get uh, some nice highlights from our light sources as well as the ability to have some nice kind of blurred reflections for most of your objects. Okay, now below this we have our refraction. Now refraction is basically transparency or the ability to see through an object. So at the moment, my refraction weight is set to zero, which gives me a completely opaque object. Now as I start to bring my specular, or rather my refraction weight up, we should start to see more of a transparent effect in here. Now at the moment, we should start to see a little bit of this transparency beginning to happen in here. Now, what we'll do to make this a little bit more apparent is we'll bring our specular weight back down. And we can also see a little bit of this red color in here, and that's still coming from this diffuse weight, which right now is set to 0.7. So if I bring that diffuse weight all the way down to zero, now we have no interference from anything else. Okay. So now we have something that is completely transparent. But you'll notice it still really doesn't look like glass, the way you might imagine. That's because right now the index of refraction is set to 1, which a refractive index of 1 is basically just air. So if we want our light to refract as it passes through this, the way that it would through any transparent surface, we need to increase our refraction to something higher than 1. So if we wanted this to be glass, the refractive index for glass would be something like 1.5. And now we can start to see something that looks a little bit more realistic. Now we could come in here and start to change the color of this if we wanted, let's see, maybe kind of a red glass strawberry. And as we start to see, that color will be updated. Now this brings me to a really, really important point, and that is while this surface is sort of a red color, you'll notice that the shadows underneath these actually should be red because this is sort of a red glass material. Now even if I come in here and refresh my IPR, you'll notice that the uh, refraction shadows here are still sort of a black color. So if you want your objects to look more realistic, especially when it comes to being glass materials, there is one really, really important option that we need to take note of. And that's actually going to be found on the mesh itself. So I'm going to grab the mesh, go to its shape node, and roll out its Arnold tab. Now by default, all Arnold objects are set to be calculated as opaque objects, regardless of what the material itself is set to. Now if we have a situation like this where we want the shadows to uh, kind of have a little bit more of a red color, as they should, we need to come in and make sure that we disable that opaque checkbox. And immediately you should see a big, big difference, where now this starts to look much more realistic. Now the reason that this is usually turned off by default is the fact that while we start to enable this, this can start to slow our calculations down pretty dramatically. So really be careful about turning this off in situations where you may or may not need it. But you can definitely tell a difference between what we had before and what we have now, just with that uh, one single option for the opaque that's now been turned off. Okay, very nice. 
So in my case, I'm going to just go ahead and turn that back um, on. And uh, below here, like I said, we do have some roughness controls. These are very similar to the specular controls that we were looking at earlier, where if we maybe wanted this to look a little bit more like a frosted glass, we could come in here and start to dial up that roughness a bit, and we should start to see that effect beginning to take shape, where now instead of this kind of nice, clear, glass-looking strawberry, now we start to get something that is a little bit more kind of frosted in appearance. So definitely a change over what we had before. And that, again, is our refraction roughness. Okay, now the last thing I want to talk about before we wrap up this lesson is the subsurface scattering. Now, inside of Arnold, there is actually a specialized subsurface scattering when it comes to working with skin, which we'll talk about in one of our later lessons. But for really, really simple subsurface scattering effects, like something that we might see on this strawberry, we do have some really, really basic subsurface scattering controls built in. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to bring my refraction weight back down to zero, so that way we're back to having a non-transparent surface. And I'll bring my diffuse weight back up. Okay, so now we start to see more of the surface color of this strawberry. Now, right now, we have our subsurface scattering weight set to zero, which means we get none of the subsurface scattering effects. But uh, if we come in here, I'm going to give this just a moment to finish updating. There we go. And what I'll do is just right-click, remove all images, and I'll save this one for comparison. So that way we can actually see what sort of an effect we're getting. So subsurface scattering is the effect where the light can actually sort of enter this surface, scatter around a little bit, and then come back to our eye. This is a something really, really common in something like this strawberry that has a really kind of soft outer appearance, uh, not just some sort of an, a shell here. So if we come in here and start to bring up this subsurface scattering weight, what we're seeing now is, again, the appearance of light that's sort of entering the surface, scattering around a little bit, and then returning and back to our eye. Okay? So compared to what we had before, definitely a bit of a change. And part of the reason for that is because we have this white color in here. Now we could come in, and let's say we take the same texture map that we've been using for this strawberry's body, and let's plug it into the subsurface scattering color as well. So middle click, drop that into the subsurface scattering weight. You might need to come in here and refresh your IPR, but in my case, it's going to be working straight away. OK. And now if we compare what we had to what we had before, we start to see something that's just a little bit softer in its overall appearance. But, so we can come in here and maybe start to bump up that weight a little bit more if we choose to. So definitely a little bit of a change here if you compare what we had before to what we have now. Okay, very nice. So now I could just come in here and start to reintroduce some of my specular controls in here, or some of my specular weight. Give that just a minute. Okay, and now you can see we have this really nice uh, strawberry in here with just a little bit of uh, specular highlight and a few other settings in here, with, such as some subsurface scattering, that, again, with a little bit of effort and just a little bit of work, we start to get some really, really realistic results.